Hey everyone, I wanted to walk you through problem 3-33 because to be honest, I was a little confused when I tried to work myself through this problem I, I planned on assigning and I have assigned uh, problem 32, or sorry, problem 33 to you guys. Um, and so whenever I want, whenever I assign a problem, I want to make sure that I can go through and solve it myself um, and that it makes sense to me before I'm assigning it to you, obviously. And when I went through this, I actually got part of it wrong and I couldn't figure out why. And um, I think part of the issue here is that I'm a compliance person and um, compliance means I prepare tax returns for a living. So I'm very used to um, using forms to, um, to calculate and apply my, to calculate taxable income and to, and the, all of the components of taxable income using the rules. And the forms will do that and they do it in a layman's manner. Um, so I really, I really like having the forms in front of me when I'm asked a question like this. So what I actually did was I went into the IRS website and I pulled form 4797 and I worked myself through it and I ended up getting the same answer as they did. But to me, it made a little bit more sense. So let me walk you through the facts of this problem first and then I'm gonna move over to the form that I filled out for you guys. Um, and I'm going to walk you through that form, and I hope that helps. So, Gamma Corporation sold the following property on March 3rd of the current year. They sold securities, equipment, building, and land. Now, first of all, what do we know about securities? Securities are a capital asset. They, um, therefore, do they fall outside of the definition of 1231 property. Section 1231 property is property that's used in the trader business and it's depreciable. Um, and I will say that land is included in there even though land is not depreciable. Land is a 1231 asset. Um, oh, and it has to be, it has to be, um, have a holding period of more than one year in order to be treated um, as a 1231 asset. And the reason we like 1231, tax practitioners and tax payers like 1231, is because when you sell a 1231 asset, you have 1231 gain. And the definition of 1231 gain is capital gain. And um, why do we like capital gain instead of ordinary gain? Well. If you know the rule that says that for corporations, you are only able to deduct capital losses to the extent of capital gains. In other words, if you have a capital gain of $10,000 in a given year from sales of securities, and then you also suffer a capital loss on the sale of some other capital asset, um, and let's say the loss is uh, $12,000, so you have a $10,000 capital gain and a $12,000 capital loss, you will have, you'll be able to use 10,000 of that loss to offset the cap, the $10,000 capital gain. So you'll end up with a $2,000 capital loss carryover to the following year. You actually carry it back, you, you carry it back a couple years or you can carry it forward. Um, but you're not able to use capital losses in excess of capital gains in any given year for a corporation. That's different for individuals. Individuals get to use an extra $3,000 of lo capital losses in excess of capital gains. So the, that's where corporations differ from individuals. So we like capital, to, we like to have any sort of income treated as a capital gain because if we have capital loss carryovers or we have current year capital losses, we'll be able to absorb those capital losses. Whereas if we didn't have any capital gain, we'd have to carry those, we'd have to disallow the capital losses in the current year and carry them over to the following year or carry them back to a previous year where we had some capital gain to absorb and we'd have to file an amended return in that case. 
So we really like capital gains. However, the IRS has come in and said, to the extent that you actually took depreciation um, in a prior year, which depreciation is an ordinary expenditure um, and it's deducted against ordinary income, we're going to make you treat the portion of the of the 1231 gain, um, the lesser of the 1231 gain or the total accumulated depreciation that you took in prior years on that um, asset as ordinary income. We're going to make you recapture it as ordinary income. So it changes the character from capital to ordinary. So if you have, in this case, this equipment here, um, they had $135,000 gain on sale of the equipment. However, they had accumulated depreciation of one hundred and twenty-five. dollars so the lesser of 125 or 135 is 125. So $125,000 of that $135,000 section 1231 gain, which would normally be capital in nature, is going to be recaptured or changed the character of, it, we're going to have to change the character of 125 out of, of the 135 from capital to ordinary. And then the, the other 10, would be treated as capital gain. There's another rule that comes into play too. Let's say that you have a section 1231 loss. So instead of, and in this case, we do have a 1231 loss on the sale of the land. So the other beautiful thing about section 1231 is that what it says is to the extent you have a 1231 loss, it's not capital loss because we don't like capital losses. Remember, we like capital gains and we hate capital losses because we might not be able to use them. And we love, um, we love ordinary losses um, and ordinary income, well, we'd always rather have capital gains instead of ordinary income. So if to the extent that you have a 1231 loss, it's treated as an ordinary loss, and we love that because then we can offset it against all kinds of ordinary income, right? So to the, ex the other rule that the IRS says is to the extent that you, have, that you claimed any Section 1231 ordinary losses in the last five years, we make you count up all of those ordinary losses and you have to also then in the current year that you sold the 1231 asset and had capital gain, you have to change the portion of that capital gain that you already haven't recaptured because of accumulated depreciation. You have to now recapture another portion as ordinary because of this non-recaptured prior year section 1231 losses rule. So, the easiest way to, and this problem is making you go through the rules that I just recited to you in such a way that you're able to then calculate taxable income and tell the character of each gain or loss. Okay, so what I did was I transferred, if you'll take a look at these gains or losses here on the equipment, building, and land, because those are our 1231 assets, I transferred those over to a form, uh, 4797, which is the form that you use to report sales of business property. So first of all, the first thing, f portion of the form that you fill out, which seems odd, but you always fill out part three first. And that's where because wherever you have a gain from disposition of 1231 property and um, 1245 property is actually um, tangible personal property like equipment or machinery or computers. That's 1245 property, which is a, which is a sub rule under 1231. And then 1250 property is real property like a building. Whenever you have gains of 1245 or 1250 property, you have to report them here. I'm running out of battery. <laughs> okay, so what I did was I transferred all of the information 
from our problem for the sales of the equipment and building, the equipment is 1245 property and the building is 1250 property over here. And I come up with, if you just follow the form down, it's very easy um, to follow down. All of this is coming directly from the problem all the way down to line 24. And then it says, if you have 1245 property, which is what property A is, the equipment, to the extent that you have depreciation allowed or allowable for line tw from line 22, just type it down here also. And then you enter the smaller of 24, which is your total gain, or 25A. Okay, and why? Because they're going to make us recapture the smaller of the gain or the or the accumulated depreciation that we took in prior years as ordinary, right? It's going to change the character of that $135,000 capital gain from capital to ordinary in nature. And then you go through the same rigmarole with regard to the 1250 property, which is the building. Now, for buildings, you only recapture as ordinary gain um, the portion of depreciation that was taken on a building which is accelerated, meaning like double declining balance depreciation, but for buildings, any building that was put into de into service after um, 1986, I believe it was, you're always going to be required to use straight lines, so you're not going to have any recapture on any of these lines up here. However, for corporations, there's another rule that they make you apply in order to recapture some portion of the depreciation of the gain as ordinary, looking at the depreciation. And that is 20% of whatever, if you pretend like this is 1245 property, what would be our ordinary gain? Our ordinary gain would actually be $105,000 because the lesser of 120, the depreciation, and 105 is 105. So if this was 1245 property, we would actually type 105 down here, and we would have 105 of the, of the well, in fact, the whole gain would be recaptured as ordinary. But um, they only make you recapture 20% of what you would recapture if it was 1245. So for 1250 property, and that's under covered under section 291, it's called 291 recapture. So I took 20% of 105,000 and I typed it in here. Then what you do is you come down here and this is your little recap summary and you add up all of your gains from up above, which my total gains from up above are 240,000. Then I say how much of my gains um, are going to be ordinary and that's where it makes you type in the sum of that number and that number. And that adds up to 146, and then they subtract it. They say 240 minus 146 is 94. Line 31 goes over to gets transferred over to page one on line 13. Line 32 gets transferred to page one, line six. So now we go to line, we go to page one, and you'll see for line six, I put that 94,000 in there from page two. And you'll see on line 13, I put the 146,000. Okay, the last thing I have to do with this form is I have to type in, I have to record and report the loss from the sale of the land. Um, and it goes here. Now, why didn't I put it on part three with, with this stuff? You only put gains from sale of 1231 property back here. And that's because they have to do this little recapture calculation. If you have a loss, there's no recapture um, except for that prior year recapture of unrecaptured losses that I told you about a minute ago, and we'll see how that's going to come into play down below. So I list my loss on sale of the land of 15000 This comes directly from your information. And then I've already got the 94 in there. I add negative 15 and 94. I come up with 79000 and now down here is where I add that 24,000 that was given to us in our facts. 
which represents your non-recaptured section net section 1231 losses from prior years. You type that in there, and what it does is it says, okay, I would have total net capital gains of 79, but I'm going to have to recapture 24,000 of them as ordinary, so I subtract the 24 from the 79. 55,000 is going to be reported as long-term capital gain on Schedule D, okay? And when I go back to the problem in a minute, you'll see that that's what, it, what the answer tells us. We're going to treat 55,000 in total of all of the gains and losses from the sale of those four, of those three properties, 55,000 is going to be capital gain. Then down here, it has you transfer that 24,000 down here and you add to that your 146 and you end up with 170,000 of the total net gain is going to be ordinary. So for the total net gain, now remember we're not, if you were to add up and when we go back to the problem, we'll, we'll add up the net gains in total from the sales of those three properties. If you were to add them up, we're not, we're not taking into consideration or reporting more gain or more loss because of us sticking that 24,000 in there or changing the character. We're just slicing and dicing it in a different way. So 170 is going to be um, reported on page 1, 1120 as a net section 1231 gain and it will be um, ordinary, reported as ordinary income. And 55000 will go on Schedule D as a net capital gain. And then from Schedule D, it will, when you get to Schedule D, it will be combined with the loss, the capital loss of 35000 from the sales of the securities. So negative 35 plus 55 is plus 20, right? So we're going to have, oh, and by the way, Look at your total gain here. 135 plus 105 is 240, minus 15 is 225, um, right? And if I go back to my 4797, 55 plus 170 is 225. So I'm still reporting the same amount of gain. I'm just slicing and dicing it differently. I'm applying the recapture rules so that I get um, my character of my gain correctly reported. Um, and you know why that's important because I explained it to you a few minutes ago. And then we can go through and finish this problem by calculating taxable income. And um, when you get down here, it gives you in the facts that they're, they have 720000 of operating income, and then you're going to add to that the $170,000 of ordinary income, and you're going to add to that $20,000 of long-term capital gain, so your total taxable income is going to be 910000 And remember, for corporations, we tax capital gains and ordinary income using the same tax rates. It's different for individuals, I realize, and it's also um, different for estates, but for corporations, it's taxed the same. Why do we have to slice and dice it and report capital gains separately from ordinary income? Because we might have prior year capital losses to report, and we want to be able to carry those over to this return possibly and offset some of that $20,000 capital gain. Okay, I hope this helps you guys. Talk to you later.